What's up guys, welcome back to another running and training vlog, which is my weekly video that I put out where I wanna hear about you. I wanna hear about your weekly runs, I wanna hear about your activities, I wanna hear about your successes, and I wanna hear about your setbacks. And in a few minutes, I'm gonna be talking about my weekly training, which perhaps you already have a good idea how my week went after the video I put out yesterday. Spoiler, I didn't have the most ideal week of training, but if we look at it from a numbers point of view, I actually had a fantastic week of training. My week was on target to be a brilliant week of training up until Saturday morning. So I can't really throw the whole week away just because I had an incident happen to me. We're gonna get to that when I tell you about my activities in just a second, and I will link to the video that I put out on Sunday in the show notes below. But guys, today I wanna to talk to you about running injuries and specifically ankle injuries for runners. And of course, if you did see my last video, you know this is pretty timely for me at least. So how many of you have had an ankle injury? How many of you have rolled an ankle while you're out on the run? Maybe trail running? I know I've done it more times than I can count, where I roll an ankle, sometimes I go down, sometimes I don't, sometimes I can catch myself, but that rolling the ankle just kind of surprises you. Maybe you roll it on a root, maybe on a rock, maybe on some dried mud. But either way, if you don't hurt yourself, you're kind of left thinking, that was a close one. Sometimes it's not close. Sometimes it's just a roll in the ankle and you roll it right into an injury. And these injuries are pretty horrific because they can last for a really long time. They can last for months. And what's really scary is if you don't take care of it, if you don't strengthen those ankles, if you don't work towards making your ankle stronger, you've actually got a higher chance of rolling your ankle again. That's right. If you sprain your ankle, you have a higher chance of spraining your ankle in the future, which is actually horrible to think about. So our ankles are pretty phenomenal pieces of our body. They are pretty phenomenal anatomical parts of us. They move on all three planes. Just like this, just like this, just like this. And that allows us as runners to navigate all these tricky terrains, whether it's sidewalks with cracks in sidewalks and maybe raised pieces to full on mountainous trails. Our ankles are made to navigate this type of thing. The downside is, is that because our ankle is so versatile, it's a little more likely to get injured. So what you're doing when you're rolling an ankle, aside from actually you're rolling it, by rolling it, you are stretching out the ligaments. And if you just stretch the ligaments, that is a grade one sprain. If you tear slightly the ligaments, that's a grade two sprain. And if you tear the ligaments completely where you really don't have control of your ankle, anymore, that's a grade three sprain. The doctor that I spoke to yesterday did tell me that I sustained between a grade one and grade two. So there was a little tearing of my ligaments. So there are other injuries that are to do with your ankle that aren't just spraining your ankle. Usually spraining your ankle is a result of something that's traumatic, something that is very sudden, something that's jarring to your ankle. So it's not like an overuse injury where over time something just breaks down until it hurts. When you sprain an ankle, it is something that you can nail down. You either land wrong, you twist it, some kind of impact that has jarred your ankle considerably. And it's painful. I can tell you firsthand, it's, it's pretty painful. I was seeing stars for a few minutes after my recent encounter with it. And that's not the only ankle injury. There are some overuse injuries that runners can get, like posterior tibial tendonitis, which is on the inside of the ankle, or perineal tendonitis, which is on the outside of the ankle. Now those two injuries, those are generally only gonna feel, they're only gonna present when you're doing weight-bearing activities. So if you go out for a run, you may feel it. As soon as you get home, put your feet up, probably not gonna be feeling that type of injury. That's where it differs from a sprain. The other difference is with the tendonitis issues, those are tendon issues, obviously tendonitis, and a sprain is damage to the ligaments. The tendonitis is probably not gonna result in any swelling, but that trauma to your ligaments, that is going to blow up like a balloon. That generally, across the board, results in a lot of swelling around your ankle. And get this, I know that I just asked who had an ankle injury, but I am willing to bet that there are many of you, many of you out there that have had some kind of ankle injury through your running career. But an ankle injuries account for 28% of all running injuries. So over a quarter of running injuries, they are to do with your ankle and your foot. So it's a pretty safe bet that someone watching this video right now has had an ankle injury sometime. There was also a study that showed that ankle injuries, specifically ankle sprains, account for 1% of sports injuries. Now guys, we're not just talking running, we're talking sports injuries, all sports. 1% of sports injuries are ankle related. So it is a prevalent issue for a lot of us. So when you're out running, this is, this is kind of a funny thing and it kind of explains, and I'm talking to you guys right now like you have already seen my video, but if you haven't already seen it, I encourage you to go watch it. Maybe, you know, I'll put a link to it in the show notes, but I sprained my ankle, I fell over, I went down. Now, once I got over that blinding pain, after about 10 minutes, I did get up and I ran another six and a half miles on that injured ankle. Now, of course, I don't recommend you do that, but I was a 
long way from home. I was just trying to get a bit closer to the house. But this isn't actually that surprising because although I was in pain, it wasn't like a blinding pain. It wasn't something that was telling me, Matt, you're doing more injury. And that's because although when you sprain your ankle, there is an inflammatory response, that inflammatory response doesn't happen immediately. It takes a little bit of time. In my case, took about an hour before I noticed any swelling around my ankle. And it was in that hour that I was able to run about six and a half miles towards the house. After that, your ankle is really gonna start to swell and it's gonna be very difficult and very painful to run. So let me just back it up a second. You know how I said that if you do sprain your ankle, you are more likely to sprain your ankle in the future? There was a study of basketball players and they were found that once they had sprained an ankle, they were five times more likely to sprain their ankle again. Now I know what you're thinking, Matt, basketball, there's a lot of lateral movements. When we're running, we're just running on the sagittal plane, but it's there for us to think about. There is a higher prevalence. So it's something that I'm always gonna have to be conscious of. I don't know how conscious I should remain of it. If I should let it affect my life. But I tell you what, when I'm running in the dark again, I will be trying to pay a little more attention. So as a runner, what do you do if you do sprain your ankle? You're out on a run, you sprain your ankle, you get home, what's the first thing you do? Well, the first thing that you should do is probably shower, because you're probably a bit nasty from that run. But after that, I want you to ice your ankle. Now, there are a lot of instances now where icing is not the best thing to do for a running injury. But an ankle sprain is a bit different. I do want you to ice your ankles. Now, this is quite a phenomenal study I'm gonna tell you about. But there was a study where they initiated an icing protocol an hour after the athlete injured themselves. There were other participants where they initiated the icing protocol 36 hours after the injury took place. And if this doesn't get you to ice your sprained ankle, I don't know what will. The results showed that athletes who iced their ankle immediately after they caused the injury, they were able to get back to their sport 13 days after the injury happened. But the athletes that waited 36 hours before they started an icing protocol, they took 30 days to get back to their injury. 13 beats 30 every day of the week. And if for some reason that you wanna apply heat instead of ice, I don't know why you would, but maybe I'm just telling you about this now because it's a bit sensational. Those athletes in that study that applied heat to their injury, they had the longest time to recovery. They didn't get back to their sport for 33 days. Oh, one more thing about icing. It's been found that icing for 10 minutes and then taking the ice away from your ankle for 10 minutes is better than icing for 20 minutes. So take that for what it's worth. Did you know that if you elevate your foot, it is better than wrapping it in, say, an ace bandage. And that results in less swelling than the ace bandage does. So ice and elevate. I know I'm not telling you anything new here. So once you can move without pain, this is what I want you to do. Maybe a day or two after you've actually done the injury, when you can move your ankle around a little bit without much pain, I want you to incorporate some range of motion exercises. Maybe draw in the alphabet with that ankle. And of course, single leg balance work, that has been consistently shown to reduce the risk of ankle injuries. And funnily enough, I do do quite a bit of single leg balance exercises. Clearly not enough. Hey guys, if you like running, if you have ever been injured, if you're interested in being a runner and the type of injuries that happen to us, we talk about that and all sorts of running stuff on this channel. So if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so right now. Give this video a thumbs up. It just tells YouTube to send it out to other people that may find it useful. Maybe someone else has an ankle injury. So really, you're doing a favor to the running community. And as I said uh, in the beginning, I did actually have a pretty fantastic week of running. I started off on Monday with 13.2 two miles very easy, which is one of my favorite runs to go out, just going out and run for like, you know, good length of time, just building that aerobic engine. Tuesday was 11.2 miles, but of that 11.2 miles, eight of those miles were at tempo pace. So that actually made Tuesday pretty solid work. There is nothing better than a tempo run to make you feel like you have accomplished something, that you are working towards those goals. Wednesday was 7.5 miles, very easy, just kind of, I think I remember Wednesday being a bit tough after that tempo workout, but I kept the effort level quite low and just churned out those miles. Thursday was another workout day for me, 8.5 miles total, but I included six one mile intervals with 400 meters recovery in between. And just like the tempo workout, Felt pretty good at the end of that. Say I enjoy these easy runs, but there is nothing better than making you feel like you're working towards your goals than running intervals, running a tempo workout. Friday was 10.4 miles. This was a fairly easy effort, but I did take it down to Ringling Bridge. So I was back and forth over the bridge for those 10.4 miles. I'm sure for a lot of you out there, this is like a normal run for you when you incorporate some hills into your easy runs. Saturday was my long run day, and this was the day where disaster struck for me. This was the day that I sprained my ankle. I had 18 on the 
the schedule and I ended up running 14.2. And the first 7.3 miles went off without a hitch. But then I went down and that's when it sort of went sideways for me. And by now you know that I did pick myself up and I ran a couple miles just to get closer to home. Sunday, obviously, probably not surprised to hear this, but Sunday was a day off, couldn't run. So this week my run total was just over 65 miles, which is Oh, shade under 105 kilometers. And of course this week I did knock out some time on the Peloton. I did knock out 134 miles, which is about 216 kilometers. You know, in the scheme of things, can't really complain about this week. I'm pretty happy with it. So guys, thanks for staying all the way to the end of the video. Make sure you tell me about your week in the comments below. My name's Matt, I'm injured. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.